The idea of today's event came from the opposition alliance from uh, Serbia, who wanted to explain the situation in the country before the upcoming elections, and we, as SND group, want to give them and our sister party platform to explain what is happening in Serbia now to Brussels and European audience. I am myself the SND shadow rapporteur on Serbia for the next five years, and I shall follow the situation in the country very closely. My name is Dimitris Pavadagis, and I am a member of the European Parliament from Cyprus. I am happy that this event is taking place, and I would like to introduce the speakers. Dragan Dilac, Mayor of Belgrade from 2008 to 2013, and current president of the recently founded Freedom and Justice Party. As a candidate for another mayoral term, he came in second during the 2018 elections in the capital one of the main initiators of the Alliance for Serbia coalition, which was formed last September. Nevoča Zelenovic, mayor of the city of Sabak from 2016, making him the only opposition mayor of a city in Serbia, president of Together for Serbia, a local party and former member of the Democratic Party. He is in process of reintegrating his party with the Democratic Party. Zelenovic was also a one-term member of the parliament in the National Assembly for, from 2012 to 2014. In 2018, he addressed the Congress of Local and Regional Authorities of the Council of Europe, focusing on the pleasures national governments put on a local opposition authorities in Serbia. Dejan Nigolic, Vice President of the Opposition Democratic Party, elected in 2018, Member of Parliament of the Republic of Serbia, continuously from 2008, President of Local Democratic Party, Committee in Sogobania, where the party had one of its strongest showings in 2016, elections. Before I give the floor to Tanya to open the event and then the speakers, I would just like to say that I'm very pleased that an inter-party dialogue is happening now in Serbia, contacted by the MEPS and former MEPS, Tanya Fayon and Gnut Flagestein from SND side. I hope this dialogue can bring concrete results. And uh, I believe that uh, boycotting is not the solution, but it's a tool. And you have the right, and we respect this right, to use this tool with a proper way. Thanks a lot. Tanya. Thank you, Dimitris. Dear friends of Serbia, first warmly welcome in this house in Brussels. Dear colleagues from the European Parliament, from, I'm glad to see also colleagues from other political groups than socialists and democrats, all the representatives of the media and others welcome in this, I would say, very important debate in a crucial time for Serbia, few months ahead of the elections, local and parliamentary elections in Serbia. As Dimitris already um, said, um, Serbia is in a delicate situation, if I don't say even in a political crisis, knowing that there is a boycott of the opposition ongoing for several months, boycott of citizens on the streets. And before starting with the inter-parliamentary dialogue, there were severe disruptions of democracy by the ruling regime, freedom of the media, was at a very low point and still is at a very low point. There was unequal access to the media. Not all parties are equally represented still today, especially on the state television stations. And there was a frequent aggression from the government towards the opposition, which is unacceptable. 
That is why we are also today hosting the representatives of Progressive Alliance in Serbia to give them a platform to express what is ongoing in Serbia. And all those circumstances and the invitation from both sides led to the arrival of us, Europarliamentarians, as you mentioned, as a forum of mediation between the opposition and the government to establish the conditions for fair and democratic elections next year. You are aware that we will have this week the third and the last round of the dialogue in Belgrade, um, the last in the first phase before the elections that will be held next year. Although the situation is far from ideal and there are still major problems in democracy, the accomplishment we made cannot go unnoticed, and I would still like to mention where we stand today after the two rounds of the interparliamentary dialogue. We see the biggest challenge in not implementing around still of 60 percentage of recommendations of ODIR, but I will say where we see some progress from the last round of dialogue that was on the discussion on the composition of 3 plus 1 and work of the electronic media regulation, the regulation of the public broadcasters and media during the electoral campaign, improvement of the transparency and accuracy in the voters list, amendments to the three key laws on financing political activities, on anti-corruption agency on public enterprises, improvement of the monitoring and transparency of electoral bodies, including with the establishment of a new supervisory board by the Parliament. But I would like to still emphasize that we have to see changes in real life. And so far, we don't see them. The next thing that is important is that we assure the proper implementation of new regulations and the laws. Only in that way, we can secure democratic and fair conditions, as it is essential to have trust among population, and the integrity of the elections. What my colleague said already is that uh, boycott, of course, can be one of the tools. But we see the parliament as a place for a dialogue, and we already in the past called also the opposition to engage in the dialogue and come to the parliament to continue talking, because this is the place for changes and for the dialogue. It's important to bear this in mind ahead of the third round of the dialogue this week. From my point of view, it's always better to have a constructive critics, thereby engaging the government and representing the interests of their constituents by improving the conditions for elections, as I said, rather than just boycotting it. And new thoughts overcoming of the existing challenges can prove to be more effective than the boycott. I am fully aware about all the challenges we are facing, we politicians, but mostly people in the country. And there are a lot of people that daily contact me and my colleagues with really big concerns what is going on. And it's our responsibility to work for those people, to establish really conditions that everyone in the country can feel safe to go for the elections, that there is also freedom of media, not only promising the changes on the paper, but to see the changes in the media itself, meaning that also the opposition would have the same chance to be heard on state broadcasters. So Serbia is for us, and then I will conclude, a very important partner. Yesterday it opened one chapter in the accession negotiations. This is a positive signal, and we need more of these positive signals from the region. Um, now we established a new way forward with a new commission, with a new European Parliament, and I hope that hand in hand, also with the all political stakeholders in the country and with the opposition that is crucial for every democratic society and healthy democratic society, we can move forward on Serbia's path towards European integration. This is our ultimate goal, no matter from which political option we are coming, but as uh, representing here 
social democratic group, I can say that we are certainly a very strong supporter of the enlargement on the Western Balkan and of Serbia on its way towards the European Union. And I'm really happy to hear today what you have to tell us. You are our friends. Um, and I hope we can work together for better or safe elections for your country benefit next year. Thank you. Thank you, Dania. Before I give uh, the floor to Mr. Nigolic, I would like to mention that uh, the event will be web streamed. Mr. Nigolic, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Dimitris. And ladies and gentlemen, my dear colleagues, uh, since I'm the first time after the elections of the European Parliament, five, uh, five months before, it's never late to say congratulations on uh, winning elections in your countries, fair democratic elections in your countries. I wish you many good decisions, starting with the new Green Deal today. It's a big thing for better and stronger European Union. I wish you many good decisions for your own countries, but also for the countries that are on their own European Union path. Uh, Ms. Fion, Mr. Opadakis, Mr. Pizzola, thank you for inviting us here. There is no many microphones for opposition these days or years in Serbia. So thank you for this one. Thank you for the window that we can shout out about our problems. As Mr. Papadaki said, I'm a member of the Democratic Party with a strong pro-EU orientation. That's why I'm honored to talk here because on the European Parliament, we see as our own institution and for the European Union as our home, where we belong, culturally, geographically, economically, and certain by the values that we stand for, that we fight for, and that we advocate. Uh, also, we are very grateful and we deeply respect your delegation to Serbia, even though we don't participate in the round table we have frequent dialogue with your represent representatives in Serbia. And I think this delegation can be very helpful in a future time and for our cause for a fair and democratic elections. But the act of coming to Serbia, the delegation of European Union, is the very strong message to my country and that you recognize the deep cri political crisis in Serbia. And let me elaborate this. European Union engaged only three times in past seven years. It was in Ukraine, in North Macedonia, and it was in Afghanistan. These countries had, at that mo moment, deep political crisis. And just fourth in the line is Serbia. So, and if we had in Serbia some experts' reports, such as a Pribe report, we didn't have it. But if we had it, you could see that the crisis in Serbia is even stronger and deeper than in Macedonia, where you proceeded and where you succeeded. And now in Macedonia, we're talking about democratic elections. But your delegation went to Macedonia on the time, two years before the regular elections. They had time to organize not just one month uh, election campaign. They had to organize the time, that democratic period, to organize a representation on equal basis for the opposition as alternative to represent themselves to the people. And the different thing is that in Macedonia, we had strong mechanisms of control. And you enforce it. And you enforce the changes with that strong mechanism and the things that we don't have in Serbia. We don't have time. The elections are on spring, regular elections. We don't have mechanisms how to enforce the changes. So the seven years 
in Serbia with a captured state, with a captured media, without any democratic representation of other opinion, cannot be resolved three months before the elections. And I have a question for all of you guys. If they took away that democratic and human right to choose, freely choose on the elections between the political parties and options, if the people cannot freely choose on the elections, can that elections be called legit, fair, democratic? Question mark for everybody, even though we know the answers. And let me explain why is three months is not enough. So I'll refer now to the progress reports of European Commission from the June this year. And let me talk about crucial parts for every democratic and fair society. Three separate powers, uh, media, NGOs, independent regulatory bodies. In the re progress reports, European Commission sent on the June this year to Serbia, you could see many bureaucratic words, yes, but still very precise, that that strict border between separate and independent uh, powers, judicial, executive, legislative, vanished. And we are talking about that the part of judicial, uh, executive and legislative power kneeled before, uh, I mean, uh, the authoritarian regime. So let me explain why and what is said in the progress reports. Judicial part, they said huge concern on uh, political influence on it. So it's not independent. Executive power is fully dedicated to the pa ruling party interests, not to the public and the common interest. Legislative power, and it said in a progress report, we're talking about blocked parliament. We're talking about blocked parliamentarism. We are talking about that, that the parliament stopped to be what it should be, the central place for the political dialogue and the debate. They suffocated the dialogue in our country and in the parliament. And the parliament stopped to do what it should do, to represent people and the people to be represented. So the opposition start to boycott it, this kind of institution or what they made of it. About uh, media, in a report there's huge concern and backslide the freedom of media and freedom of speech. And to be precise, full governmental control of a telev televisions with a national coverage. Concerns are shown also in the Freedom House report. Concerns are shown in the Reports Without Borders report, an IRX index. And without freedom of media, there are no free elections. In a part of NGO sector, the progress report said there is no atmosphere for developing this crucial path. For the independent regular bodies said that it's not, they are not anymore independent. They depend on a government and ruling party and they serve to them. So if you can imagine the every disc in the spine of the free and democratic society is dislocated is damaged or broken. The spine of free and democratic party is bent, and the door for autocracy are open. The door for autocracy to divide people, to ruin institutions, and for human rights abuse. So, in the captured state and in the captured media, without any representation of a different opinion, they took away right, political and human right for people to choose on the election. And if people cannot choose freely on the day of the election and to make opinion before the election, can that elections be called 
legit. Again, question mark for all of us, for European Parliament also, and even though that we know the answer. So I'm addressing now to my colleagues, uh, members of Parliament, there, is, there are members also. Uh, you're a politician, not the officers, and not, you're not working in offices. You knock doors in your constituencies. You talk to the people on the street, on the, in the market. And uh, you know that the life circumstances uh, often can be more cruel than it's written in some reports. So let me rephrase you what the progress reports actually means in life circumstances. Uh, when in, in the progress reports it said that there are concerns about chapters 23 and 24, a lack of reforms which stop Serbia on its European Union path. It means also a selective justice. And let me show you how. Three students from the protests were arrested because kicking an empty bottle toward police. They were arrested, charged, convinced, sent to the, sent to the jail in five hours. And on the other side, five years later, there is no justice for Milan Gavrilović from Mionica, mayor, candidate, Democratic Party, whose head was crushed against hooligans and sent message to the Democratic voters not to go out and to vote. Five years later, nobody's guilty and nobody's charged. Institutions are silent. Three years later, there is no justice for Sava Mala, the part of our capital, Belgrade, the center of the city was teared down, demolished by heavy machineries and the people with the hats. In the election night, during the night, police turned head around on the other side. Institutions are silent. They demolished a part of a Belgrade and nobody's guilty, nobody's convicted. Year before, one of the leader of Alliance for Serbia, Borko Stefanovic, where he was, uh, they crushed his head with a metal stick, the back of his head, all, almost murdered. One, they arrested the hooligans, they set them free, and one year after, nobody is charged and nobody is convicted. Student from Novi Sad, Dejan Bagaric, also, he was bitten, and nobody is convicted, and nobody is charged. So many, during over the Serbia, many, many, these cases of physical assault, because they use their own right of freedom of speech. And when we are talking about report, and it's, when it says there is a problem with the human rights, and enforcements the law, it on, in the life circumstance it means that the whistleblower from Valjevo, Alexander Obradovich, who should be whistleblower and he is by law, who indicates on a possible huge corruption related to the minister's government, government's minister, he was arrested instead of enforcement of a whistleblower law, he was dramatically arrested and he was kept in the prison 20 days without any public information. When the people heard and stood up, they sent him to the home custody. And even now, three months later, he is in a home custody without indictment and without any proof of any criminal act. That is the message to the whistleblowers to shut out and to not to show on the criminal acts. That is the message to the whistleblower law that they can obey it or they don't have to obey it. When we are talking about concerns on human rights related to the labor environment in Serbia, we are talking about 250,000 people who works and has 
the labor contracts on three and six months, and they were blackmailed with extensions of their contracts that they have to work for the ruling party. They have to force their families and to force another four or five votes, and they're blackmailed by the extensions of their, uh, their contracts. So we are talking about one million forced votes abusing labor law in Serbia. When we're talking about freedom of media, well, we're talking about full governmental control on every television and media with the national coverage. We're talking about attacks and threats against journalists who, and which are critical on a ruling regime. They make an atmosphere that is possible to set the fire on the house of a journalist and shut in the doors in a case that he won't go out, uh, try to murder him. And the high officer, high ranking officer of the ruling party is convicted. Actually, he's accused of ordering this attack. I'm talking about very strong tabloids machinery who made an atmosphere after one terrible campaign, the leader of Serbs in Kosovo was murdered by five bullets in his back. That kind of atmosphere we're talking about. And the new situation was that I think you're gonna hear of this the first time. The ruling party is making a protests over the opposition because of a front page of uh, one weekly magazine distinguished called NIN. And without the freedom of media, we don't have free and fair elections. And we have to fight for it. So, seven years of captured state, seven years of captured media, out of any representation of a different opinion cannot be resolved in just three months before the elections. This outgoing dialogue in Serbia, made it by the EU, EU uh, Union parliamentarians, will not resolve the resolution of political crisis. Not because of your colleagues. They are doing a huge effort there because that the governmental part don't want to change things. They negotiate by that they don't want to change things in practice. So even though if the regime makes some changes in practice, they will change nothing. And nothing is not acceptable for us. So we made an expert team to make steps with very credible people who make very concrete suggestions with the steps how to get to the aim of free and fair elections and normalization of situation in Serbia and democratization. But we need uh, mechanisms of control how to enforce changes and that is the thing that we could do together with you, European parliamentarians, and the support of European Union. Well, until there, we're going to keep fighting out of the institutions, on the street. People started the protests uh, one year ago on the street against this regime. Opposition went out of the institutions. We started boycotting and joined the people on the street. This is going to be follow up by boycotting these elections on the spring. That is going to be follow up with, with uh, out of the institutions fight for our cause. Because our right is to fight for democratic and fair elections. 
And it's our obligation toward the people on the street, toward the people uh, on their jobs struggling for their lives, to fight for democratization, normalization, and also fair and democratic elections. And I ask you for the support because of our mutual future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dejan. In order to be politically correct, it's uh, North Macedonia. <laughs> now the floor is Dragan Dilay. Huh? Do you want Mr. Zelenovic? Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Papadakis. Dear ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor to stand before you today to shed light on the worsening political crisis in my country, Serbia. The last few years we have seen serious regression in Serbia's democratic reforms, which has led to the complete state and the media capture by the regime. In the meantime, Serbia opened another chapter in the accession process just yesterday. This is an incredible situation. Let me stress that my strategic priority as the President of Together for Serbia is and will remain Serbia's accession into the European Union. There can be no doubt that Russian, Chinese and other external influences are growing in Serbia. However, when you ask Serbians where they want their children to grow up, they will name the European Union without question. While EU membership might be an abstract concept for many Serbians, they all want to live in a country modeled after EU member states, namely where you can receive quality education, where there is a robust healthcare system, where the rule of law is the reality rather than a term into a newspaper. Most of all, Serbs want a country where our children will want to stay and build towards a better future together. The only way to achieve these basic human needs are through EU membership. The only way to, uh, I count on your support as we navigate this difficult but necessary process of structural change. My experience as a mayor of Shabbat uh, tells me that the quickest way to a democratic society is to include citizens in the decision-making processes. In Shabbats, we have the largest participatory budgeting program in Serbia. Just last Sunday, 100,000 people in Shabbats got the chance to vote what two million, 2 million euros of their tax money will be spent on. All proposals were submitted by the citizens themselves to improve their communities. In general, Serbia struggles to ensure that people pay their taxes. Um, through this program, the tax revenue in Shabbat has increased threefold. This shows that citizens' inclusion leads to the most important pillar of democracy, the trust. We also recognize that Serbia cannot move forward alone. Our success is dependent on the success of our neighbors. For the reason, Shabbat has extensive cross-border cooperation with the cities in Croatia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, and Albania, to name a few. Personally, I am most proud of our project with the municipality of Page in Kosovo, where we used our expertise uh, in Shabbat to teach seven Serbian and seven Albanian families to grow strawberries together. We look forward to seeing the literal fruit of their cooperation in the springtime. Let me stress here that I am fully committed to normalizing relations with Kosovo. We cannot run away from this issue any longer, and I want to be included in its solution. I'm clearly saying to you today, without normalization, neither our citizens nor our country can advance. We have implemented many other successful programs. Currently, we are working on a financial management and control system to create more transparency and prevent corruption. In my view, a democratic administration with nothing to hide can have no problem with the system. Nevertheless, my city is the first to implement it, although it has been a legal requirement for all public bodies for the last 13 years. All of these examples can easily be replicated in the rest of Serbia, which is something I promote as a president of Together for Serbia party. Despite these positive examples, I stand here today in an extremely difficult time in Serbia where both the state and the media are captured. This year, the first high profile whistleblower, Mr. Aleksandar Obradovic, uncovered a major corruption scandal showing the entanglement of the Interior Minister's father in shady weapons trade deals. Instead of protecting Mr. Obradovic, the public prosecutor responded by placing him into custody. 
This is indicative of the state capture of all key institutions in Serbia, including the judiciary. The situation is worsened by the complete capture of the media space in Serbia, in which no dissenting voice can be heard in the mainstream news. All those who criticize the government are mercilessly attacked by the media apparatus, by the journalists, professors, actors, even judges. The dramatic regression of media freedom in Serbia has been determined by the, uh, every independent monitor. This year, Serbia dropped 14 ranks in the World Press Freedom Index. Since 2014, we have dropped 36 ranks. The government capture of the media was also cited as the main reason for Freedom House demotion uh, of Serbia from a free to a party free country. We therefore demand the replacement of all members of the regulatory body of electronic media, which is supposed to oversee the media space. There can be no free and fair elections in Serbia until we liberate the media and our institutions. In addition to the fact that the no dissenting voice can be heard in the mainstream media, pressures on the Serbian electorate are currently astronomical. For example, almost a quarter of a million people in the public sector work on a short-time contract which expires just before the elections. These contracts will be only renewed if employees provide evidences that they voted for the ruling party. When the families of employees are taking into account, this amount was up to more than 20% of the electorate. We have come here to show you that the opposition is united in its commitment and, uh, to a democratic Serbia based on the rule of law. However, the current capture of the state and media has forced most opposition parties to announce a boycott of the upcoming, upcoming spring elections. The announced boycott is not our goal. It is a means to create basic circumstances in which we can finally start discussing the way forward in our nation. I have been asking for a mediated dialogue with the government for two years to improve electoral circumstances. However, the government only agreed to this dialogue last August when they knew it was too late to make any meaningful changes ahead of the spring elections. Nevertheless, I want to thank Tanya Fayon and his team for your commitment to the EU mediated dialogue over the past few months. Your efforts are greatly appreciated. I now ask you all to re-engage with the Western Balkans and Serbia in particular to prevent further escalation of this crisis. We need your help to spread the word about the situation in Serbia, to put pressure on the government to make meaningful reforms that benefit both Serbia and the EU. We are in this together. In the spirit of social democracy, I want to thank you uh, for your show of solidarity by being here today. And you look forward to working together to help Serbia join the European family where it rightfully belongs. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Zelenovic. And now, Mr. Gilas, last but not least. <laughs> Thank you very much. I prepared some presentation, but before we start with the slides, you can see this. Not necessary. Huh? I have to inform you that a few days ago, employees in a state post company started strike in Serbia. Their salaries are about 300 euros per month. Uh, in the same time, well-known people who are supporting Vucic's regime, such as singers, TV hosts, and starlets, relatives, are also employed in the post office. Their salaries are higher than 1,000 euros per month. Government yesterday and today sent police forces to threaten employees to stop strike. One of the postmen today tried to kill himself by cutting his wings. Our presentation is presentation we gave the name This is Serbia. And I will try to be fast and read this, but you can read this directly from that. This is Borko Stefanovic. Borko Stefanovic, an oppositional politician, was beaten by a metal bar before gathering of the largest opposition group, the Alliance of Serbia, the largest opposition group in the country. <coughs> this is the security of the ruling Serbian Progressive Party. They are drawing and kicking journalists out during the inauguration of President Aleksandar Vucic in 2017. This is Maria Lukic. 
Me Too Movement symbol in Serbia. She is a victim of high-ranking official from Alexander Vucic's party. The trial is under huge obstruction and re-abuse of the victim. This is the rally for support for a sexual abuser and the president of an, of an municipality in south of Serbia. He is an official in Serbian Progressive Party. The rally is organized by the Aleksandar Vucic ruling Serbian Progressive Party. This is Milan Jovanović, a, report, a reporter on corruption and crimes of the SNS officials from his district. During the night, while he was sleeping inside, his house was set on fire. As the house was burning, masked attackers were shooting at the doors to prevent him from escaping. He survived by Merlock. And this is Alexander Obradovic, a whistleblower from the Krushik Ammunition and Arms Factory, revealed corruption, influence peddling and political misconduct of Nebojša Stefanović, the Minister of Interior Affairs, his father, Branko Stefanović, and Aleksandar Vucic, President of Serbia. In the international arms and ammunition trade, he was jailed on September 18, 2019. Since October 14 this year, he has been under house arrest. And because of that, we get this picture. This is our dissatisfied citizen protesting against the regime of Aleksandar Vucic. The protests last more than a year. Since December last year, the protests were organized in more than 100 towns and municipalities all over the Serbia. Sorry. Dejan Bagaric, Mihailo Nikolic, Milan Blagojević, Marko Đelević, Dalibor Stanojević. Eleven people. Two things are connecting these people. All of them were beaten up. All of them organized rallies against Aleksandar Vucic. Arrest of high school and university students who protested against Aleksandar Vucic. This is a mother of one of those arrested pupils in front of the police station. Two professors, Maria Stanković and Mirjana Mitrović, were fired because they refused to insult people on social networks and to attend rallies organized by Serbian Progressive Party with money from public institutions and state-owned utilities. And this is Aleksandar Martinović. He is the president of the parliamentarian group of Serbian Progressive Party National Assembly. Nine professors from higher medical school in the town of Ćupria were fired in order to provide additional income for him and for Vladimir Orlić, the deputy president of parliamentarian group of Serbian Progressive Party in Serbian National Assembly. Students are in boycott of their lessons. 236,000 people in Serbia have temporary contracts for their jobs. If they want it to be extended, they are required to support Aleksandar Vucic and his regime in every possible way, including taking a photo of their ballots on election days to provide their loyalty. Ivanka Popović, director of University Belgrade. Mio Dragmaic, the judge of the Court of Appeals in Belgrade. Branislav Trifunović, actor. Rodoljub Šabić, former commissioner for protection of public data. Bishop Grigorije. Dušan Petričić, cartoonist. Predra Koraksić Koraks, 87 years old. Dušan Teodorović, member of Serbian Academy of Science. Matija Bečković, poet, writer, and, academ and member of the Serbian Academy of Science. Against almost 
Everyone who even dares to criticize the regime, the media and tabloid immediately start to run a brutal campaign. Their targets are well-known actors, university professors, comedians, judges, bishops, Serbian Orthodox Church, academics, cartoonists. After three years of attending the kindergarten, Marta from Žitoradža was expelled because her father liked Facebook posts that were critical of the government and the ruling Serbian Progressive Party. Apart from verbal and physical aggression, Vucic responded to protest by buying two out, of, two out of five TV stations with a national broadcasting license, O2 and Prva TV. He is also connected with the acquisition of one of the oldest daily newspapers in Serbia, Večernje Novost. This is a fake cover of one of the oldest weekly outlets. Serbian Progressive Party made this one. On this picture, you can see a murderer of the former Prime Minister, Zoran Džinđić. More than 700 fake news on the front pages of daily newspapers in Serbia in one year. It was two years ago, now we are about 2,000, I think, because we have the progressive this. This is some really data one of them you can see. Vucic appeared exactly 793 times within a month, 13 days, 15 July, 14 August, on TV station with a national coverage, which means that the appeared an average 26.4 times a day. Opposition, zero. Again, zero. Exactly zero times opposition leaders appeared on commercial TV station with a national broadcasting license from last general election held in, held in 2016. Four years, four TV stations, zero. Very, very easy to, to remember. And we prepared this before, I will read this again. There are workers of the post office, their salaries are about 300 euros per month, police is forcing employees to end the strike. In the same time, well-known people who are supporting Vucic's regime, such as singers, TV hosts and starlets, are also employed in post office. Their salaries are higher than 1,000 euros per month. Eighty percent of the political actors who are appearing on televisions with a national broadcasting license are government officials and ruling party members. They are represented positively or neutrally, while the representatives of the opposition are constantly represented negatively, of course. This is some of the cover pages. We translate this in English. We have few of them every day. This is interesting. Their only policy kill Ucic. This is a very professional journalist. Uh, I just say one, this sentence about me. For these headlines, I personally sued editors and media over a hundred times. For such brutal lies, penalties are about 1,000 euros. They pay 1,000 and continue, of course. And finally, this is really Serbia. We have demonstration which organize government against opposition. This is really organized by the members of the ruling party. They are protesting against violence of opposition, accusing me and some other people for killing the Serbia. This is on Cyr in Cyrillic, my surname. With these cover pages and this, you can see them very famous guy at the moment in Serbia. I'm not so happy because of that. This is a lot of cover pages. You know that we have time to time this like comedy. Six months ago, Minister of Defense and the member of the parliament wanted to have to start it with a hunger strike against opposition. It is very interesting to see what is demands. I, I, I didn't read, maybe you know better than me, that in some other countries have 
happen something like that. Opposition leaders have been blamed without any proof for attempting murders, but not only me, everybody who thinks different, not only opposition leaders, for preparing an assassination of the president, plotting civil unrest and try to murder them, him, hiring foreign mercenaries, etc., etc., etc. And this is Serbia today, after seven years of Aleksandar Vucic in power. I think that for, for me, at the beginning, that's enough. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gilas. Yeah. Just one thing, thank you, because of other things here. I have to leave until I'm going to leave my friends to answer your questions. Thank you for listening to us. I think that now you have a picture about political crisis in, in, in Serbia. Uh, Ms. Fajan, Ms. Papadakis, uh, thank you again for inviting us and see you in Belgrade. Thanks a lot for being here. Now it's time for debate. Uh, for the first round, three questions, please. Very short. It's not only for the members. Uh, all of you, you have the right for questions. Yes, please. Uh, sorry, it isn't a question. <laughs> um, so I'm vice president of Europa Nostra. And we have also Europa Nostra as a European uh, NGO taking care of cultural heritage all over Europe. In all countries of Europe, we have a, Europe, a member, Europa Nostra Serbia. And it's a coincidence. So we are, uh, cultural heritage is for us, let's say, a vital resource for society. That's the DNA of our identity, of European identity in all countries. And we are fighting for this. And just a coincidence is that yesterday we made public the short list of what we call the most endangered heritage sites in Europe. And uh, the short list so, is brought in by our members all over Europe. And we have 14 that we publish, and then two, uh, two months later we say these are the seven. And we do this together with the European Investment Bank, who pays us for, to do the job. So we cannot fund. And coincidence is that yesterday in the shortlist is the Belgrade Fortress and its surroundings. I just thought it was good that this was mentioned here. So we are concerned about what's happening in Serbia, for sure. We appreciate that the opposition, altogether in different angles, can voice their concern. But I think that this Belgrade for Fortress, and I just read you in the text, in the short text that has been published, is one of the most important cultural monuments in the Republic of Serbia, with the fortress and its surrounding landscape having borne witness to the presence of humans. Since the Neolithic period, as evidenced by remains of Celtic, Roman, Byzantine, Hungarian, Bulgarian, and Serbian Middle Age periods, as well as Ottoman as Habsburgs, this is just part of Europe. And so when this is now threatened by a harmful cable car, which would compromise drastically the integrity of the site, I think that authorities should not allow happen this. And th thank you for your attention. Thanks a lot, Drag. And any comment? Yeah, we, we have all information, and we know that you tried to help us to stop with this project. Uh, this is unbelievable project that citizen uh, really not support anything like this. Not only Alliance for Serbia, a lot of other groups and uh, organizations like Nedaimo Beograd and some, some NGOs is against this. My friends from the, from the alliance like Nikola Ivanovic, Marko Bastac, other people fight against this and we are ready to stop this with demonstrations necessary. But this is the way how the, this regime functions. You said we are part of, the, part of Europe and we believe in this and if somebody from Europe said something, no, please stop with this. Unfortunately, it does not happen. Thank you very much for, for your help us to, to our fight, in our fight. Thank you. 
Well, just to say a few words, it's like the Europa Nostra is a, uh, is a very important uh, organization helping the cultural heritage to all over Europe. And when I'm telling about the problems in Serbia, it's not, well, say, it's not a member of the of matter of the enlargement of Serbia. It's a compliance to Serbia, uh, the compliance to Europe. So actually, we need to have all these regional entities to be part of EU. And it's not possible, for example, if you don't take care about your cultural heritage. For example, in my home city, the budget for culture is 7%. In the same moment, the, but the budget of the, our national budget for culture is 0.6%. So it's like a very, very disappointing figures. This is how things are doing in, in, in Serbia. So this is also one of the main reasons why now, because if you don't spend money in culture, you will not spend money in investing in your people. If you don't invest in people, they will not be capable to make a decision. In a society in which people can make decision, anything can change. Anything can, can happen. So uh, investing in culture, money, is actually investing in people, in their self-confidence, in the future. Now, unfortunately, this is not something that is happening in Serbia today. Yes, please. Yes, my, uh, my name is Vinod Kvartvlieg. I'm here as a private person. Um, I think it, maybe it's not so surprising that in first instance there were not many questions in the room because I think the picture that the three presentations together wave were uh, devastating, very impressive. Um, the question, of course, is uh, I think you gave a very clear picture, all three, of um, what are the challenges in the country. Um, now, maybe a question is what do you think this means for the way that the European Parliament can act or react, the way that the EU, the way that the EU Commission can act or react? What do you ask from the European institutions in response to the picture you showed and which I think doesn't leave any, uh, any lack of clarity? Thank you. Too much speak for me. Um, uh, we are representative of the parties who fought for the Serbia in EU last 30 years because I am the oldest of these, unfortunate of these three guys, and we continue with this. And time to time, we are not so happy when we see what is the reaction on everything that happened in Serbia came from EU. We are very happy that we have delegation of the European Parliament parliamentarians now in Serbia. But just to know that after every visit of European parliamentarians, the terror rate increases. Uh, in Serbia, people have come up with a joke that we need to ask you not to come anymore because they will kill us all if you continue. This is just a joke. Please come again. Because without you, we can't do anything. There is a lot of possibility, uh, not only these uh, uh, activities, what you have now, we are really asked from the Priba report from the Serbia, particularly in media, because we had this in, uh, in uh, North Macedonia, because we believe that the future and uh, how we can decrease all these tensions and make the Serbia free, free country, get the freedom again. This is this model from North Macedonia, the Persian contract and the Persian agreement, and they help us to make something, something similar. And uh, I hope that in the future we, we really make something like this. I have one question for everybody to use opportunities that now you give me possibility to speak, maybe next time say no. Uh, as I understand well, this is European Parliament. This is Parliament of the whole Europe. It's true? This is a rhetorical question. It's not necessary to, to vote. Serbia, North Macedonia, Montenegro, Albania, Bosnia are part of the Europe or not? of Europe, yes, this is European Parliament. But why we do not have the representatives in European Parliament? Why we cannot have elections for European Parliament and MPs here? Maybe we cannot vote for everything, but only country who really want to join the EU. Why we cannot have somebody who is representative all these five countries here? I know that you tell me this is not possible, but constitution, laws, but everything can change. I think, I, of course, I believe in this one day, I hope, 
soon. I think that people from the West Balkans, they need a message from, from, from Europe, from European Union, that really one day our dream can be something that really happened. And we need some message because we have feelings that everybody forget on us. Uh, we are relatively guilty because we are not the best countries and everything. And we know, and Nebuchadnezzar sure will agree with me, I sure, that we need reconciliation with the all nations in our country, in our, in our region. First start with reconciliation between Albanians and Serbs, because this is the biggest problem, but continue with the others. Reconciliation, not story about territorial adjustment or something like this. Reconciliation, I try to speak. I always to explain to people, we have the war, Second World War. Some part of our society live in this Second World War. Another part live in the war with uh, Croatia 30 years ago. A war on Kosovo was 20 years ago. We have now the students who are first and second years of the university in Bulgaria and Pristina. They were not born when we have the war. Give them the chance to, to, to find a solution. And in the meantime, we can give possibility to people to travel without any problems, the health care, use health care system, whole Serbia, that our, our sport team can normally compete, decrease the tensions. Can you imagine a situation that somebody, for example, Albanians, who protect the Serbs during the war, we can watch him, them, on state Serbian TV. In the same time, Serb, Serbs who protect the Albanians the war, that Albanians can watch them on, on Pristina, Pristina State TV. It showed the people. My, one of my friends told me that in the last 20 years, he did not see anything positive about any Albanians on any media in Serbia. We try to fight for this. And we need the people who were not participate in these war criminals, in war crimes. And I hope that this is the chance to solve this. Start with this reconciliation whole region, increase the salary. Because if you have 300 euros, this is very difficult to, to do anything. If you have 700, 800, 1,000, you can find solution for a lot of problems. We need the Europe to help us to make this part of the, of the Europe with a normal salary, that the parents can, can, can give something to the children to buy the bicycle. If they start to think about that, we can solve a lot of problems. If you start to think how they survive with 300 euros, we cannot solve any problem. And I think that, okay, now we speak about Serbia, about elections, we are on the boycott. One day we have the free and fair elections. But I think that we start to think about the whole region, not only about Serbia. Thank you. I would like to also add your answer to your question. Well, you know, we have these reports, different kinds of reports, especially, the, let's say, the one of the EU Commission that said there is no let's say, progress in Serbia. But this is incorrect, because the situation is rapidly deteriorating. What does it mean? The situation become even worse from month to month. And now the, our political opponent, President Fuci, is preparing for elections by hiring criminals all over Serbia to support his organization and to win on the next elections. In my home city, Shabbat, he hired the worst criminals, somebody who was in, in, in prison for 12 years, to organizing the Progressive Party in my home city. And now we are here speaking about democracy, about institutions, about the fair elections. And we want to have a fair election, because this is the way the sol for the solution for everything that we now uh, uh, set in front of you as a problems. But there is no fair elections in Serbia. And in front of the entering the, the EU Parliament, there is a sentence that said, in free and fair elections, the power of the people determines the people in power. Or why we don't have rights for that? Why we are not in a position in Serbia to have this kind of approach, this kind of democracy that is very, let's say, uh, very often in, in Europe, why don't you have power to, to vote freely? If this is something that we are asking. Can you please help us to have a fair elections? Because if you have a fair elections, then we can solve all the other issues. They are not be, they are not be solved if you don't have everybody in a parliament, all the representatives of all people. Now, 
It's not about the opposition who will like to boycott. Maybe like in Albania, or it will happen in Montenegro. I'm for sure it will happen in Bosnia too. It's about people. They don't want to be fooled around again. They don't want to be in uh, some processes that are false, they are political circus. That's why people don't want to participate. Not the opposition. There will be some other opposition leaders and parties. But the people don't want to be fooled around again. In this region, that's why they are moving out. That's why they are going to Western Europe. Instead of that, maybe we can do something. We have some offers. We are not here to complain. We are here to offer you some other, let's say, development. And we can do it together to actually start our, our region, the Western Balkan, to be, become very similar to you. For that, we don't need much time. We just need the chances that you have already here. And the political crisis that we spoke about in Serbia, it's like uh, very similar to climate change. It becomes even worse from month to month. So if you now say, OK, there will be some elections next March or April in Serbia, we will, we will see what we'll do after in the uh, second half of the next year. Believe me, it will be much worse than today. In 2021, even worse. It will not change if we don't act now. So please, we are in, in front of a political crisis in which we like to solve everything peacefully on the fair elections. Before um, I raise, ah, yes, please. My name is Miroslav Kantek. Uh, I would like to touch upon the relations of uh, Serbia with uh, Kosovo, uh, as you mentioned, uh, because it, it, it is about one year and a half since uh, Mr. Vucic and uh, Mr. Taci at the European Forum uh, Albach introduced the so-called final solution of, of uh, territorial uh, swap uh, that fortunately did not happen because it was quite clear from the beginning that this is not a way uh, uh, forward. Um, and uh, with uh, the change of the political situation in, in Kosovo, when basically a politician from opposition, Albin Kurti, although he is not a, a, a lover of Serbia, let's let's put it this way. Uh, but he he is a former dissident. He the, the political situation changed uh, a lot in 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 last uh, years when basically uh, the former um, people who were involved uh, in 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 the war, uh, so their position is not as strong as it, as it was. Do you see there any potential uh, cooperation? with a with, uh, former leader of opposition? Is there any chance uh, to, to change the paradigm of this reconciliation with uh, Albin Kurti, who is a very different political force uh, from uh, former prime ministers of Kosovo? Thank you. Thank you very much for this question. Well, about the, the cooperation between the Serbia and Kosovo, it's very similar to all the other cooperation in the regions. We all need understanding and cooperation. Now this is something that's missing. I explained you to, to my speech that we developed a really close cooperation and even a friendship with the cities in Bosnia, in Croatia, in Albania, and in Kosovo. And I'm very proud of the cooperation that we had in municipality of Pech, in which we actually support seven Serbian and seven Albanian families, farmers, to start to produce strawberries together. It's simple as that, but it was hard as hell to even be in a position to actually help somebody to start to earn some money on their own. It's also about self-confidence. People don't want to be part of a social care system. They need to start to behave as a common citizens, very capable to earn some money. And we don't allow them. Because at the same moment, when we announced this cooperation with project with my colleague, Mr. Muhajeri from Municipality of Pech, both of us, me in Serbia and him in Kosovo, we were announced as a traitors, the worst traitors from the Kosovo battle. 
because of the strawberries, because of planting some plants, you know, because of helping people turn some money. And that's why I think that we need to start to, to work together, to listen to each other, to cooperate, and then we will find the all solutions. Now, I don't know how, but nobody know, knows what's, what's going on. What is the platform? How we can talk with the representatives of Kosovo? Nobody knows anything. I understand that sometimes it's, it's a secret thing. It's not possible to have everything you know, open. But still, it's not possible to have a solution that would bring out the permanent peace here and to be sustainable if you exclude the half of the population from it. The half of the population. So I tell in my speech, I am willing to be part and to be involved in this process of solving the Kosovo issue just to start to talk about it. So maybe, maybe we can find it, but before of the, everything else, we need to have a chance for the, our citizens to, have, to vote freely, to have a fair elections. If we have a fair elections, we can solve everything else. Um, I have a suggestion. Maybe you can try with the apples, not with the strawberries, maybe. Maybe this is a problem, but speaking seriously, <clears throat> we as a party adapt, adapted this uh, declaration about reconciliation and whole alliances for Serbia is, uh, supported this and I spoke about the basic things. I think that now I agree with you that the situation changed with Mr. Kurti and the new government on Kosovo. I think that, I said this a lot of times, I do not believe that the uh, solution and, and uh, anything for the relation between Albanians and Serbs uh, could, could bring the people who was participate in the war crimes and push other other to make something like this. I think that we need a new politicians who can start to start to talk. Uh, Mr. Kurti and I, we have totally different at the moment position about the future of this part of the Serbia. But I think it's necessary to speak with everybody who really can deliver something. I think that the, the, it's not necessary the reconciliation of politicians. We are not so important. I think that it's important reconciliation of two nations, about the people who live, they can travel normally, they can live normally. That this is a, after that, politicians will have, must have the, 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 the some normal solution. Our political family has a clear position about the Larchem and the Western Balkans, and we insist on that, and you have to know that. Uh, because we believe that Western Balkans it's a part of Europe. I want to raise a question for both of you. What are the plans for the day after the elections? <laughs> well, you know, we are now in a phase in which uh, three different parties together for Serbia uh, Social Democratic Party and Democratic Party are in a phase of reunion. In reunion, to build a honest and party that is dedicated to the people, and you understand because you're all in politics, it's all about trust, whether people will trust you to do something for their own good. We believe that maybe Democratic Party will succeed this time, doing something good and something useful for everybody. We will open our finance so that actually everybody can see how things are going in the Democratic Party. And we will call people, members and citizens in Serbia and abroad actually to support us because we need to continue our fight and after these false elections. We think that we can, in a short time, return all our financial debts and also enter into a new phase in which we will offer to Serbia the new faces in politics, with the new answers, and actually start a new era in, a, in a Serbian politics in which actually we can provide better citizens' involvement in one hand, on the other hand, start to speak freely about all different topics. We see as the Democrats Serbia in the EU, like I said in my speech, also see uh, Serbia in, in, in a in a position that uh, 
anybody can vote freely, but also people can be involved in all the making decision processes. But before all of that, we need to have a fair elections. And what we will do? Well, we will survive. We will survive after these elections and financially and structurally and be even stronger for next fair elections. But I repeat again, it's not about members of the opposition in Serbia. And it's not about us. It's about people. They don't want to participate on the elections, not on this one. So we will see what will happen. But now if any opposition leader would like to come and say, OK, let's go to elections, even if it's the worst one, nobody will follow him. Nobody will follow him. So that's why it's very important to have change. Some change, anything. Because the existing situation can bring anything good for the future. And as I said, it's like a climate change. It's getting worse every day. I think that Nebuchadnezzar said everything. I totally, really agree with everything. I just, I do not accept question what happened day after because we don't know what happened tomorrow in Serbia and uh, this is a few months from today to this day of election uh, I, I just want to persuade some, some very important things that in, in a report of European Commission all these demonstrations said it's a peaceful demonstration without any violence and we want to continue on the same way and fight for, the, for something what is the normal in, in Europe 21st century, that somebody who thinks different can be on state TV or another TV station, that newspapers cannot destroy the life of the people. It's very simple that if you work somewhere, you, get, you have the job, you get the salary, it's not necessary to vote for somebody or what is the worst, that you can bring five people with you, they vote and make the photo of the, of the ballots to show the, the people from SNS if you want to keep the job. Uh, this is not the idea, and I, I always say the same. Aggression and tensions in, in Serbia are extremely high. And because of that happened a lot of bad things. I think for everybody, particularly first on the government, but an opposition to, to do everything to decrease this. And our solution for fair and free and fair elections, what is the demands who, who, who they wrote that the professors, university experts, not politicians, is in some way how we can decrease this. And after that, we can have the elections and we'll see who wins. Okay, one election, two, third, it's a lot of elections, but we really have to, 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 to try to find this solution that we can, can have the normal election. Because at the moment, I think that is a very difficult to imagine situation for us. is is very difficult to when we see something with somebody who 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 who, who do not who do not be, who do not live that. This is uh, unbelievable. I just say again, we have the, the the state that the minister of defense, and all members of the parliament for the ruling party, wanted to 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 get to to to, to start it with the hunger strike against opposition. It happened six months ago. This is like fake news, like Monty Python. This is unbelievable. Ten days ago, we have demonstrations, protests in Serbia against opposition. Come on, can you, can you believe in this, really? And uh, I'm the, time to time, I maybe I not look enough a uh, serious guy, but I'm, I'm really, this is a make joke time to time, but this happened really in Serbia. Demonstration against opposition. For dictatura or dictatorship or I don't know, tyranny or opposition. How? Nebuchadnezzar, I, I don't, he, you, you mentioned or not, we have 100 and uh, how, how many municipalities in Serbia? 170. In only four we have opposition of power. <laughs> this, is, this is democracy in Serbia today. Thank you. And now Tonino Bicula, our coordinator in AFET of s and Group for the closing. Thank you, Demetrius. I do hope uh, that, uh, and it is not possible to close one process. We start to debate right now here in the European Parliament, and it's very important not 
because of the future of the Serbia, but the future of, uh, I think, wider region and the European Union uh, itself. Serbia is questioned today. It's questioned by members of our sister party, opposition alliance, in a way. We tackled today what's going on here in the Serbia. Uh, we try to be honest broker between anyone who saw us, heard us today, and uh, of course, uh, European institutions as well. It's important to talk about the Serbia situation, first of all, in Belgrade and other towns and cities, small and big ones in Serbia, but it's also important to convey important messages to European institutions. And I think synergy is the only way to help Euro European Union to get um, accurate and precise information of what's going on in Serbia, but we need also to encourage uh, our friends from different political, pro-European, first of all, political parties, to carry on. It's not easy to decide to get out of the parliament and uh, continue with your protests on the street. It takes courage, but it should be very well premeditated, because it's much easier to get out of the parliament, it's much tougher to turn back. I'm talking not because I read some encyclopedia pages, because I pass it as a Croatian parliamentarian. Before I continue my political career here in the European Parliament, I passed through it in the Croatian Parliament, not once, but a couple of times. So what might fair suggestions could be for our Serbian friends and colleagues? Yes, it's time when it's important to say no to authoritarian regime, tough guys, goonies, bullies, to stand for your convictions, to try to defend them. But it's a tricky part. We, you, we might take into the consideration that from time to time, don't mix two things. Saying no to bully must not be saying no to institution. Because parliamentarism, I think it's more important than any given person, especially not parliamentarian, against parliamentarians. Because what's the core of the authoritarians? They would put aside parliament, true, genuine parliamentarism. And of course, to rule by the strong hand. And of course, it's, it's in their best interest to block parliamentarism and to, let's say, um, put parliamentarians and opposition forces somewhere out of the system. So it's, it takes wisdom as well to balance between conveying messages, attracting people out of the parliament, but of course, also it's very important to assess when your message, your politics, your stances, and of course interests of the people are better defended within the walls and under the roof of the parliament. It's not easy to lecture and to teach it depends on the particular circumstances in any respective countries. But this, Serbia is again faced a uh, crossroads. And I would like to share modest advice to our colleagues from the Serbia to be able to recognize when it's time to organize effective, well-performed uh, and, and, and driven um, marches from the, on the streets, and when it's time to punch back within the parliament. There is no recipe. It's just, in a way, consideration of this situation. Socialist Democrats, we will back you. It goes without saying, because your fight and the values you are standing for are our values. And, of course, we will be with you not only here in European institutions, we are planning to come to the Serbia, we are planning to come to Belgrade on spot to check the situation and uh, despite some, let's say, wise advice why we are interfering. No, we are not interfering. EPP people visited Belgrade the other day. It's, for us, it's normal. And it's normal for us to open this debate here 
within the European, European part. So uh, mm -hmm. I, first of all, believe and want to believe that today panels will help you to, of course, to uh, check our point of views. Uh, we will, of course, we are pleased uh, with your visit and your, 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 your assessment of the situation and wish you uh, nothing but the best, with or without, of course, uh, your decision to go back to the parliament, fight for your cause, and of course, step in on the elections of the Good luck. everyone for being here tonight with us. Thanks a lot. Thanks to the SD group in the European Parliament for organizing this event. Uh, you really cannot imagine how much important this is for the Serbian people and for the trust in the EU. Thank you very much. Thank you.